Hi, welcome to this video on how to price solutions using uh, Microsoft Azure Virtual Machines. My name is Aidan Finn and I'm the Technical Sales Lead at Micro Warehouse, which you can learn more about on www.mwh.ie. I've been working in IT since 96. Um, I'm a Hyper-V MVP um, and I have a background in working with Windows Server and Desktop Systems Management, Virtualization and IT Infrastructure. I tweet as at Joe underscore Elway. I blog on my own site on aidenfin.com and I'm a contributing editor on Microsoft Virtualization at the Petri IT Knowledge Base on petri.com. Micro Warehouse is a wholly Irish owned distributor based in West Dublin. We distribute for a number of companies including Microsoft, Toshiba and Apple. And we also work with some complementary uh, solutions from the likes of Data on Storage, help you do storage spaces and scale up file servers, Five9 for management and security solutions for Hyper-V, and Binary Tree to provide uh, Exchange and Office 365 migration solutions. In the Microsoft space, we specialize in small medium enterprise. We also work with cloud technologies such as Azure, Office 365, CRM Online, and EMS. As a distributor, Micro Warehouse is a value-added distributor, so we don't just resell licensing to um, resellers and consulting companies, but we provide a lot of educational material and assistance and education. In this video, we want to talk about how to price solutions using Azure Virtual Machines. A lot of people are finding this to be kind of challenging and difficult because the pricing that they need comes from various different places, and because it's new, I think a lot of people are actually scared. But it's a lot easier than people actually think it is. Um, it's easier than pricing a hardware solution with servers and storage and networking it's much easier actually and um, the challenge is understanding where to get the pricing for the various pieces and what that pricing actually gives you so that's what I want to show you in this video now in the previous video that we did on understanding Azure for small medium enterprises I presented this slide and I talked about a scenario where a customer was moving a legacy line of business application from Windows Server 2003 that was running on-premise and then we're going to move it into Azure where it was going to run on Windows Server 2012 or two virtual machines. So the benefit for the customer is they're going to be moving into a large, scalable, flexible and affordable infrastructure. But they're also getting access to Windows Server 2012 or two and they don't have to afford or purchase any kernels. They also upgrade their SQL and they don't have to purchase any kernels for that. And I'll explain that in a second. Now in this solution, it's a hybrid solution. So the customer is still going to have users and some servers running on premise they're going to have some stuff running in Azure. And they'll connect their on-premise network through a site-to-site -site VPN connection. So that's a normal VPN connection from their Edge network device or a Windows server into an Azure virtual network. And that Azure virtual network is their own private network full of one or more subnets within Azure. In this network, they're going to deploy an end-tier application. So they're going to have some domain controllers, and those domain controllers are going to be Azure Virtual Machines that are members of their on-premise Active Directory domain. They're going to be domain controllers that replicate with their on-premise domain controller through normal Active Directory replication mechanisms. So there's nothing new there, it's just a site link. They're going to have a SQL availability group, so they're going to be running SQL Server 2014 on a pair of virtual machines. And they're going to have a front end of their application presented through a web interface. And this is going to be a set of load balanced web servers. You can see there's five of them there, but three of them are grayed out. And this is because this customer is going to take advantage of a feature called auto scaling. That allows them to have the potential capacity of up to five load balanced web servers, but they will start off with just two. And they will only power up additional web servers as processor demand requires it. In other words, when they have user demand or margin or revenue demand, then they are actually going to power up the virtual machines as they need them. And they will automatically power them down again. So they're going to have a very affordable solution because you only pay for Azure virtual machines while they are running. Now you continue to pay the storage cost, but that's quite low. The significant cost is while the virtual machine is running. So how do we price up that solution? Pricing Azure solutions always starts with a search engine. Azure, pricing, and the thing you want to search for. So, in this case, virtual machines. We browse to the first result that comes up and we're brought to this page. How Azure pricing works. We scroll down. And we can see there are different tiers of virtual machines. We've got a basic tier, we've got a standard tier, and then we've got another tier referred to as the D-class tier. 
And we also have a G class tier. Let's go back up and we'll talk about this basic tier. This allows you to deploy different specs of virtual machines, and you can see them here, A0 to A4, that don't support load balancing, auto scaling, or memory intensive virtual machines. So the biggest virtual machine here has up to 14 gig of RAM and eight cores and 240 gig of disk space. This virtual machine is great for some workloads such as domain controllers because we won't load balance domain controllers. Active Directory takes care of its own systems. And maybe we might even use it for some low-end SQL servers. The standard tier gives us those functionalities that aren't included in the basic tier, such as load balancing, auto scaling, and memory intensive virtual machines. And it gives us more vi uh, varieties of virtual machines. So we get A0, all the way from one core and three quarters of a gig of RAM, all the way up to an A7 that has eight cores and 56 gigs of RAM. You also note that the, uh, the disk capacity increases as well. This is the temporary disk capacity. Every Windows Server virtual machine comes with a 127 gig C drive. And this is the D drive where the paging file and maybe a temporary database will be stored. We have the D class virtual machine, which allows us to run virtual machines that will have much better caching performance because the D drive where the paging file is stored or a temporary database is stored is actually based on an SSD drive that's local in the host. There is also a cousin of this called the DS series that allows the virtual machine to be wholly placed on SSD storage for incredible performance. And finally, there's the G series. And the G series gives us virtual machines that have huge amounts of memory. Now, we're not going to be using anything that fancy for this solution. We're going to be sticking with basic and standard tier virtual machines. But before I want to do that, I want to talk about some of the pricing. So I mentioned that virtual machines are only charged while they're running. And you'll see there is an hourly cost for every virtual machine and an estimated monthly cost. The cost of that virtual machine includes the operating system that is pre-installed. So if I deployed an A2 virtual machine with two cores and three and a half gigs of RAM and a 127 gig C drive with a 60 gig D drive for the paging file and temporary databases, that would cost me approximately 84 euros a month and that includes Windows Server 2012 or 2. It's a per processor license, which means we do not need any user or device calls to access this virtual machine. It doesn't matter where we're accessing it from, we do not need calls. We can deploy Linux virtual machines. It's estimated something like 20 to 30 percent of virtual machines on Azure are actually running Linux. We can also deploy virtual machines that have SQL Server pre installed. And the hourly cost of those virtual machines includes SQL Server. Again, we do not need any device or user calls to access that SQL Server. So this becomes a very affordable and flexible way to deploy SQL Server. There's no long-term commitment, and it's very affordable because it's a micropayment. We have the same with BizTalk and SharePoint and even Oracle. So if you want to deploy the most expensive type of Oracle Server, you can do that on an hourly charge basis using Microsoft Azure. So let's go back to our Windows machines. We're going to need some domain controllers. Now I think that a virtual machine that has one and three quarter gigs of RAM should be fine for a domain controller unless we are running a very large Active Directory domain. So I'm going to put in some information. I have a spreadsheet here and I'm going to put in different specs of machine. So I'm going to go with, for our domain controller, I'm going to go with an A1. Basic. And we're going to have two of those, and an A1 basic is going to cost us just over five cents per hour. And we can see the cost of that is going to be 81 euros and 61 cents. And there's my formula there, two by the hourly cost by 730 hours per month. Now my SQL virtual machines. I'm going to go to SQL and I'm going to go with a machine that has four cores and we are going to deploy an A3 standard virtual machine. 
So SQL, SQL A3 standard SQL, and that is going to cost us just over 29 cent per hour. And remember that includes our SQL Server and our Windows Server licensing without any CALs. Okay, and now we need some web servers. So we are going to use auto scaling. So that rules out the basic tier because auto scaling is not included. We go down to the standard tier, and I'm going to want virtual machines that have four gig or four gigs of RAM or close to it. So I'm going to go with the A2, which gives us three and a half gigs of RAM, and that is going to cost that. So that's a standard A2. The standard A2. And we're going to have five of those. But I'm going to put an average number of hours as 300. Because my virtual machines aren't going to be powered on all the time. We're going to be using auto scaling. So our average number of hours is going to be 300. So we have five by that, by that, which gives us a total cost of 201 euros and 15 cents. Okay, next we're going to need some storage. So I'm going to estimate that we need 8 gigs of RAM. However, where do we get the pricing for that? So uh, Azure Storage Pricing. And Pricing Cloud Storage Microsoft Azure. And we'll scroll down. We have different resiliency le levels of storage. So for virtual machines, we can use one of two types. We can use locally redundant storage. And that gives us three synchronous copies within a single data center for our virtual machines. We can have geo-redundant storage, and that keeps three copies synchronously replicated within a single data center. And then in a neighboring region, gives us another three asynchronous copies. So if one region goes offline or is lost, we still have copies of our virtual machine files and their data in another region. I think I'm going to go with LRS because it's going to be cheaper. So if we scroll down, we'll find there's different types of storage. There's block blobs, which is used for streaming and documents and unstructured data. That's not suitable for virtual machines. There's files, which is currently in preview. This is a, a way of providing shared content between applications. Again, it's not suitable for virtual machines. There's tables and queues, which is a form of NoSQL storage. Again, not good for virtual machines. But there's page blob blobs and disks, which is optimized for random read and write operations, page blobs, and ideal for virtual hard disk images. And that is what we are going to use for virtual machines. We can see the pricing here. So the first terabyte per month is going to cost just over 3 euro cent per gig. And each additional terabyte, up to 49 terabytes, is going to cost the same, and all the way up. And when we get to 4,000 terabytes, that's when the price drops. So just over three euro cent per gig for storage. That's a lot cheaper than a SAN. So copy that. And we can see the price per hour. We paste that in there. And I said we wanted 8192 gigs. And then we need storage transactions. Actions is a tricky one. Every transaction such as a read or write operation to our storage has a cost. Now luckily this is a micropayment and it's one of those things that to be quite honest, if you're running a normal workload, it's not going to be a big deal. In fact, trying to estimate the cost of this would probably be more expensive than the actual cost per month. So I tend to put in a, a nice high figure and it tends to be quite a small number all the same. So it's two tenths of a cent or 27 hundredths of a cent per 100,000 transactions. So that's a very teeny tiny cost. So I tend not to sweat that one so much. So I put in a nice high figure, and we can see that the cost is that. So copy that there. And we can see it's going to cost us about 100 euros for a crazy number of those transactions. The next thing we have to get is our networking costs. So if we go back to the design, you can see that we're going to have a site-to-site -site VPN connection. And that's going to require something to run in the Azure Virtual Network called a gateway, which is a highly available VPN endpoint. 
So there are two tiers of that. We'll have a look at the pricing for networking now. So Azure pricing networking. And we'll click on that link there. And we can see the prices of a gateway. So there's two types of gateway. There's a, the normal one, the standard one, which gives us about 80 megs per second. And then there's the high performance one, which gives us about 200 megs per second. And both of these are highly available. So we're going to go with the standard one, and that's going to cost us that price there. So just over €2 Euro cent per gateway hour, or approximately €21 Euros per month. So we'll drop in the price there. Sorry, wrong place. We'll drop in the price there. And then we have to worry about egress data. So what is egress data? Egress data is data leaving Azure. There is no charge for data going into Azure for virtual machines, but for virtual machines, there is a cost of data leaving Azure. Um, again, it's it's a micropayment, so it's not something you're generally going to worry about, and we can see the cost here. Now, I'm working with Europe 1, or Europe North, which is in Zone 1 in Azure, and there's the cost per gig, again, just over €2 Euro cent per gig. So we'd have to be doing a lot of data transfer, or data leaving Azure, so this for this to be a significant cost. So we plug in our price there, and we can see that 100 gigs per month is going to cost me €2.61. So it's not a massive cost. I mean, for a web application, we shouldn't see that much data going or leaving the, the application. So that's our total cost right there. We've got our VPN cost. We've got our storage and storage transaction costs, and we've got the cost of the individual virtual machines. If we sum it all up, we can see that the total cost for this project is going to be €1,145.51 per month. And remember, this includes our virtual machines, our storage, our operating systems, no need for any device or user cows. And we're not worrying about things like cooling, electricity, fire suppression systems, and all that other stuff that builds up to the, to the increase the capital expenditure costs and the operational expenditure costs of running an on-premise application. All that stuff goes away. We don't have to worry about replacing that hardware every three to eight years either. So that €1,145.51 per month is giving us quite a bit in this solution. So, there's a lot that's going on in Azure. It's constantly changing. So we recommend people not just get up to speed quickly, but also continue to stay up to speed. So you'll find a lot of material provided by Microsoft in places like the Microsoft Virtual Academy. And Micro Warehouse is also running a series of events that runs every month, and a series of ramp-up events to help people get started with Azure. You'll also find videos like this popping up on our site every now and then on mwh-learn.azurewebsite.net. That's one of those free websites that you can deploy on Azure. So thank you for tuning in. My name has been Aidan Finn. I'm the technical sales lead with Micro Warehouse at www.mwh.ie. And you can learn more about our Azure and Office 365 and other events at mwh-learn.azurewebsites.net.